uh, most of the stuff here. Uh, but really and truly, you know, we've done a lot of activity up the front end, and we've started looking at courses. Uh, but uh, from our own experience and those that we've looked at, we just want to highlight a few things. Exactly. Okay, so just a refresher here. These are the, the eight general QM standards. Uh, and uh, one of the whole um, elements behind QM is the sense of alignment, right? If I have an objective, I have to have some assessment of that objective. And so just sort of understanding that, that we have to make everything work together. And this is one of the issues that we have. Even though we have a lot of these tools in Canvas, you've got to make sure that you align them correctly and that all these pieces are put together. And these are the standards that we use when we're measuring the course. And they're, it's very detailed. They have a lot of annotations. It's a whole book. And, we, and to, to give you an, an idea, to go through a course takes anywhere between four and six hours when we review a course. So it's a lot of work here. OK. So we just want to talk about the course introduction. This is one of the, the first standards for QM and is where, where much of what we are, are doing in the sort of an online environment. You know, <clears throat> we're so used to doing it in the classroom where our personality comes out, our way of teaching comes out. And so you know, how do you express that enthusiasm that you might have for your topic and your subject in the class uh, in an online environment? It's not that easy. Okay. So we go to, to do that, we have a part called getting started. And every single online course, we are looking for this getting started. So let me, um, I was going to show Sarah's because Sarah did a really nice job, but she already showed her course. So um, I'll show you one of the courses that I'm doing on, <coughs> doing right now on online and how I, I did this getting started. So. I'm teaching an IT course in Diane's group. So my person comes into the home page, and the first thing they say is, welcome to start this class, click here. Start here. So immediately, there is no confusion as to what to do. And that's the biggest thing you have to remember. In the classroom, you do not realize how many cues you give your students all along the way. But in online, you, have, you cannot take anything for granted. It has to be so prescriptive to get them to know exactly what you want them to do, how you want them to do them, when you want them to do them, where you want them to put it, you know, and how it will be evaluated. So in, in this particular example, um, QM is very clear as to what this start here should have. Um, things about um, an introduction, introducing yourself, because in online there's three components. There's presence. Student presence to students, student presence to instructors, and instructor presence to students, and then the cognitives, the, the presence to the material, whatever you're displaying. So anyhow, in this whole start here. Now, we have in Quality Matters created a template. You do not have to create all this. And we have a, already something called Canvas 101 that I have created that everybody is enrolled in who has Canvas where they can, you can copy and paste this stuff and start to have you know, the foundation for this start here. You do not have to worry about just creating it from scratch. Except you do need to put your own personality on it. Don't <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't copy, don't copy mine. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has a personality in class, right? And exactly. so it's important. But we're trying to make it easy for you to sort of at least get some ideas on what should be on there. Because most of us, I think, uh, we're much um, particular academics, you're, you're so used to uh, reading and grading and you, know, you can read somebody else's stuff and say, that doesn't apply to me or whatever. But we try to create the framework for the getting started. Okay? Okay? Uh, big thing too, you know, that we keep on stressing is this whole idea of, of um, instructor presence, right? And, and how do you sort of make yourself um, Available to students uh, in in the right context, and how do how do we do that? Do you want to talk about some of that? Yeah. So we talked about quite a few tools. So we talked about Speed Grader, for example, and being prompt with your assignments. The number one thing students look for in interaction from their faculty member in an online course is feedback. The number one thing: survey, research paper after research paper. So timely feedback is incredibly important. So utilizing the Speed Grader. 
um, the discussion boards. You don't have to, do, to respond to everybody's discussion board post, but by goodness, you want to get out there and let them know that you're reading these things throughout the week. So they're looking for that type of thing. Uh, the other thing simply is emails and announcements. Um, Canvas allows you to do a video, send them a video announcement. You know, use all of those multiple modes of communication to be able to really connect with your student. This particular software, Canvas, allows us to do that, which is a step above where we were. We're standing with that between them and love. Oh, okay, I know. I Okay. <laughs> Got to get that perspective in here. Okay. So, <laughs> right? right? Okay. Uh, and again, you know, that, that, the, the teacher engagement is one, but student engagement is another. And I, I think the comment before about, about people not really knowing what to do, which is right, the whole purpose of the, the getting started and being very explicit in, in what, you're, what you're really saying. Uh, and, and the other uh, uh, context is really trying to get some relationship with those students. Uh, uh, as, as part of online. And this is a key component when you're taking a course from a face-to-face -face and moving it to an online. The QM panel is really looking at how are, is the teacher and student interaction occurring. At a very detailed level, we really want to know how are you going to do this. If you say you're going to have discussion boards, that's not enough. What are you going to do with the discussion boards? Yeah, are you going to you know respond to a, thir a third of the comments each week? Are you going to do a summary or all of that? We're looking for details of, of, of the process that you're going to take. Technology. Okay, so we know that Canvas has a lot of technology within it. We know that it has the ability to do audio. It has the ability to do video. But it also has the ability to import external types of things. So you can add your WordPress, you could bring in Twitter, you can bring in other types of software that might be appropriate for your um, course. And, and, and your audience, right? I mean, it's sort of interesting because you know, we're both teaching in the IT program, so we, we can make some assumptions about the technology literacy of our, of our in other places it's, it's a little different. So I think you have to be aware of that, that student knowledge of technology. And you also have to be aware of the fact that most of the younger students are going to do this on mobile, right? And therefore, you have to sort of think at least about how, how this looks. And you should really look at it on the mobile devices to see what it really looks like. And, and the last point I want to make about the technology is that we all know that students have different learning styles. And we all know that students are reading less and using more graphics and video, whether that's right or not. So you want to be able to accommodate all different types of learning styles. So courses that we look at that we see is, are really heavy text, those are not the kind of courses you really want for an online. Those are boring, check the box kind of courses. You, want to, you really want to mix up that technology. But you want to be able to prepare your students for the technology ahead of time. OK. One of the, the big things that QM does emphasize is accessibility, right? Uh, if we, as we move online, then accessibility becomes uh, a, a major issue. And so again, just understanding, uh, uh, I don't know that we have a good collection yet of, of uh, requirements for uh, the course, but we will, we will put that together. And, and Canvas has a bunch of tools too, but being aware of accessibility is a big point. And just if you have videos, make sure there's closed caption. YouTube doesn't. So if you have a video, put it to YouTube. You can put it in your private YouTube channel, and YouTube has the closed caption ability. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Okay. Now this is a big thing when we do the QM reviews. One of the the, the SACS requirements is you know the, the the number of hours of face to face time, right? Okay. So how do you translate that to the online equivalent where you're looking for teacher-student interaction, okay, and, and, and the equivalent of FaceTime. So we, we have put together a document uh, that uh, we, uh, we can make available if you're going to go through the QM review process, which sort of explains some of the equivalences of what we're looking for. So that information is available. Big, big part of our review. Yes. Learning objectives. This is the biggest change for people. Um, all of, everybody's syllabus has learning objectives. The course has learning objectives. 
But with an online, QM is looking for learning objectives at the module level. So each week, if you create a weekly module, QM is looking for a learning objective and the learning activities that you're going to use to meet those objectives. And that has been the biggest shift for people because they're not accustomed to doing it at that detailed level. What has occurred, though, is it's made people really think about what they're doing and whether it's actually meeting those objectives. I have had, in consulting with over 25 faculty so far, that has been the biggest thing that's come back, that people really now are thinking not just about their online course, but, geez, I've been doing that forever in my face-to-face. -face. Maybe that's not working anymore. Right, so this is, this is the probably the, the, the most piece of work, the most, piece of work no, most amount of work, let's rephrase that, most amount of work uh, in terms of re rethinking the syllabus from a, a course level down to a module level. Um, your material. Okay, this this is another uh, biggie one. in terms of of uh, what we're looking for at QM is the fact that you know when you're in the class and you're using published materials, you're value adding in the class by your own knowledge and your own experience and whatever. You do not get that effect in a, a, a online course. So you really have to add something extra over and above the instructor materials per se uh, for it to be. Uh, an approved uh, QM course. I just want to remind people, I know some people uh, uh, do that. And the other thing to always remember, going back to, you know, uh, the integrity piece, that the vast majority of students have access to the answers to all the quizzes on publisher material. They're freely available, right? Okay, and so again, is that really a good assessment of learning when you know that people are really just going out and finding that information. So we do look very closely uh, when we look at a course to make sure there's something extra that's added in terms of content and, and it's not just published material. <coughs> okay. And the, the thing is, as we get ready to get to lunch, the task force is really there to help you. So there are people from your schools to help. I am there to help. But the idea is that um, we're building this consortium of knowledge now. And, and uh, you know, we have Sarah back there, we have Ali New, Michelle. So as more people roll in and off the panel, the amount of knowledge is really spread out. And that's a very positive, positive event. So you have these resources. Uh, we're, we're building it on Canvas now. Some of, the, some of the key things that you need, this Canvas 101 will help you with little videos on just how to start. Just tiny little start. And anything else? Yeah, just last slide. Okay. So, anybody got any questions for us? Okay, no, you can ask a question now. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. All right. Right, so over the summer, uh, Sherry found some money for us to pay for, for faculty to attend Quality Matters courses. So several of us took up that opportunity. So thank you for the fun. Right. Oh, yeah, there's still space. We, we've had about 30 people take the courses. And it's actually, um, we really haven't enforced it, but we want it to be a requirement for teaching online. Sachs wants to know what your qualities are, qualifications are, and we're going to really look to have people, all people teaching online having to take the course. Or taking a course. There's a selection of courses. You don't all have to take the same course, uh, but, right? Well, right now there were two courses. There was one for if you've never taught online, one for if you're a experienced and you want to increase your ability there like two. I mean, you're, you're taking the course online over a year experience. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's very short. The only comment I had about those courses they didn't really adhere to QM principles, right? Yeah, they were, the, the I mean, course. that was my hardest problem with yeah, them, right? The course didn't use multimedia. They didn't the use multi. It was very text-based. So. Yeah. Okay.